welcome to Aura Talks. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Aura Talks. We are currently at episode seven, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Aiden, Jasmine, and Mir, who are all wonderful, active youth currently residing in the community. So, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I genuinely appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for having like, because like basically a couple of weeks ago, I got to talk with Ayesha and Sas, right, who also grew up in the community. But it's different. I really wanted to take the time to talk to people who are still living in the community and who are still like younger. Because I mean, I don't know if it's fair to say we're adults now, but it definitely feels like we're entering adulthood year by year. So thank you for joining, guys. It's funny, like a uh, little background to how I met you all. Um, I think everyone has this assumption when you grew up in Oroville, you like meet everyone, you, you're tight with everyone, but it's not necessarily the case. Even for me, like when I came back, I had never talked to any of you guys, like ever, you know, maybe I saw your face and I saw, oh my God, little cute Aiden or little cute Jasmine, but never talked to you guys. And the reason that we got to actually interact and get to know each other better was, so earlier last year, like I was in Oroville, I was doing a lot of surveys or like uh, formal research to like understand how Oroville as a community, um, they, what they think of the uh, concept of basic income. So I was like surveying and interviewing a lot of Orovillians. And at one point I felt so exhausted, not just in terms of talking to so many people, but I felt like I lacked like youth energy. You know what I mean? I, I, I lacked interactions with younger people. So I was like, okay, I don't even need to hang out with people my own age. I want to hang out with people who are younger than me, you know? So then I had the spontaneous idea to organize the round table sessions. Remember guys at Future School? Yeah. And it was actually so fruitful how it came about. So we would have a handful of students from Future School, a handful of students from law school, and we began to explore topics, like just random topics that were actually quite relevant. So the first topic was Orville philosophy. So we read the Orville charter, I remember, and we kind of dissected it and shared our own interpretations of it. And then we also explored like what it means to uh, integrate people better, how, what our current uh, situation with the surrounding bioregions are, and also what it means to empathize with people. Because growing up in a community like Orville, you're constantly surrounded by like different types of people. So it's really important to master the skill of trying to understand what you're not familiar with, right? So, I mean, during those conversations, I will, I'm not going to lie, guys. I was very, very impressed because I think at that age, how old are you guys, by the way, right now? Um, go first. Like how? how 15. 15. You're 15, Mir? 16, 16. 16, 16, okay. I'm 17. 17. And Jasmine? And I just turned 18 during the quarantine. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, happy, happy belated. Um, <laughs> I just remember like, okay, at that age, I definitely didn't feel like I had the social aptitude to explore topics like this in front of other people and be so respectful about it. So I honestly was super proud. I was like, wow, Oracle generation, they're getting much more socially apt over time. So I was just genuinely like, wow, these guys are very, very um, talented and smart. So how about you guys, we start off with a very short self-introduction. So Jasmine, Mir, and Eden, just uh, what, at which age did you come to Oracle and what have you been doing? So did you, just a little bit of background for the audience members. Okay. okay. So I came when I was six months old. So as far as I'm concerned, I've been here my whole life. Wow. Um, um, I've had a pretty, like, I've gone the alternative route, even in Oracle, where everything's kind of alternative in terms of education. Um, and right now I'm in last school. Okay. And you, Aiden? Um, so me and Jasmine are classmates and I've been born in Oroville. I've been born in the house that I'm right that I'm at. Um my parents came twenty four years ago uh to live in Oroville and I also did the same schooling as Jasmine up to this day. Uh we've gone to the same class and the same school. Um yeah. <laughs> that's that's that yeah that's pretty much it um i'm in my last school my last year of high school wow uh, that we're gonna start supposedly in a month we're gonna do our last year um let's hope it starts in a month because i don't wow, want that's to. exciting guys last year of high school i remember it very fondly like shout out to nelson mandela high school i went to a high school in berlin called nelson mandela and it was like golden years like you know when you see um high school portrayed in american like uh, popular yeah. hollywood media it's always like a lot of bullying a lot of like uh, insecurities i didn't really have a lot of that i feel like jasmine and uh, aiden you 
pretty much have like a really good uh, high school life, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Also, our um, class is so small. It's like we're all really close. Yeah. And like one thing, definitely, like all my classmates have like been there in my life for um, a long period of time. But it's like really a second family, and I really appreciate that. That like we're so close as a class, you know. Yes, I'm gonna give you a nice reaction here. <laughs> um, what about you, Mir? A little bit about you. Um, I was born in Orville, Walpondi, and I've been here my whole life. My parents met in Orville. Um, uh, I want a different route in the in education than Jasmine and Eden. I want to transition and then future school. Um, but since the uh, Orville community is so tight knit, uh, I was still able to. We're still able to become friends with the different schools. Uh, yeah. Like. Well, that's really really important. Yeah. Sorry, Mia, did you say something? No, no, no. Um, I think like what's interesting is already in this self introduction we had like talk of like Orville education, right? And one thing that I'm personally very grateful for having grown up at the community is just the overwhelming support and guidance that I got to learn and explore. Like if there was an initiative that I wanted to actually learn something, I felt like there was always someone, whether in the school context or outside, to help me out, right? I think um, it'd be really nice for the audience members who are not very familiar with the diversity of Orville education to like get a better understanding of this. So Oroville, unlike most parts of the world, does not have just one conventional educational system. I think there's some distinct uh, systems or like um, schools in place. So I'd love to know from you guys, because as you already mentioned, like Jasmine and Aiden, you guys are in law school. Mir, you went to uh, future school or you're still attending future school. So could you guys kind of elaborate on what are, certain di what are the certain diversities that we're seeing in Oroville schools? And let's say even the specifically um, What's the difference between law school and future school, which are both high schools? So I would say the major difference um, between them is that in law school, it's very much more like uh, focused towards free progress and like self-motivation. Um, and in the other case, you have future school, there's like the teachers like um, push you a bit more because you have the exams. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the UK exams, I'm not so familiar with what, uh, yeah. EXL, right, Mir? If I'm not wrong. EXL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, that's the main difference, I would say. Okay. Uh, you guys want to add something? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, what are your thoughts, Jasmine and Mir, on this topic? Um, you first, Jasmine. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. I feel like um, another, like, major difference is just the student teacher relationship mm. like i th i feel like i'm friends with all of my teachers um i'm not sh i've haven't been to future school but from um friends i hear that like it's less like that in future school it's more teacher student relationship um and that's something i really enjoy about last school so yeah yeah Oh yeah, I completely agree. I think like in the reason why maybe uh, future school tends to be a bit more formal is because you have more formalities to adhere to, for example, like taking exams. And maybe that's why it's not even for teachers, they have to take on that role to be like, okay, guys, remind the students, like we're here to take exams as opposed to yeah. law school. It's not so clear cut, like what the goal or the purpose of education is much more open end and much more exploratory, I think, in that sense. I think the what, what I, I could consider the goal as like, in, in law school, at least for me, it's like self-development and like to grow as a person. And yeah, yeah pretty much that. Especially like um, the third and fourth year, they really give you like a freedom to explore what you want and like take, even if you want uh, like free time. Like I had a lot of that last year. Um, I had like so many projects going on. I did a two weeks course of barista that I didn't go to school like at all. Then I did um, my first tourist guiding trip that I went to Thailand. I also missed two weeks of school and my teachers were considerably um, accepting with that and they didn't yeah. much 
uh, of a stingy eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I think what I would love to know now from Mir is, I mean, last school sounds like, honestly, nobody would argue that last school seems like, sounds like a dream, honestly, especially if you compare it to most conventional educational systems outside here in Europe, for example. So Mir, why did you, was it your decision or was it more like um, the guidance that you took from your parents to go to future school? Like what made you choose future school? Um, honestly, when I was first, when, so in transition, we all go, we go to different schools. We get an introduction and, uh, out of three schools, Ness, last school and future school, uh, in the beginning, I was really indecisive. I was even thinking of, uh, doing both schools. Some students take some classes in last school, some classes in future school. A lot of uh, teachers advise me not to. It's yeah. quite a difficult um, schedule, routine. Um, I don't know. So uh, like spontaneous decision? Yeah, spontaneous. <laughs> Sometimes like decisions have to be made spontaneously, especially I feel like when you're younger. I think I don't know if you guys are gonna come to this soon, but after after high school you have to make the big decision of what the next step is because you've really concluded a very formative chapter in your life and it's a difficult period for a lot of people. And some people go into business, others people go into engineering, other people go into art school or something more creative or something more let's say even craftsmanship. But then like, it's so unfair to have that kind of important decision that really defines the rest of your, let's say your twenties to like at that early age, you know? So I think sometimes you have to be honest and be like, okay, it was a spontaneous decision instead of trying to like justify, yeah, I thought about this. I thought about this factor and that's how I came to this decision. Don't lie. It was a bit spontaneous, you know? Um, so I want to ask all of you guys, what do you just generally think? about the education system in Oracle, like in comparison to the rest of the world. I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, high schools, middle schools, and primary schools abroad, but let me just give you a little bit of context that it is very, very different. They have a very fixed curriculum that they stick to like year by year, starting from primary school to all the way to high school, right? Especially in a country like uh, Germany, there is like a meticulous system that you like stick to. So in comparison to that, like, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on horrible education? Honestly, I think it's, it's really good. It's great. <laughs> I'm super grateful that like my parents uh, had me here because when I go back to my home country, that's uh, Spain. Yeah. Um, for sure. Like I can see that my cousins and all my friends, they don't like going to school. Like, and I enjoy like, even maybe in the moment I'm like, Oh shit, it's eight o'clock. I got to start going to school. Like, it's a bit of a drag, but then when I finish it or I look at myself like uh, two years back, I'm like, whoa, that, that was a re that's fun. You know, like I have fun at school. And especially when I see them, it's like, it's a bit of a torture for them, you know, and the connection that they have with their teachers, like it's, it's shit. Like they, they swear to their teachers and mm -hmm. the teacher swears back to them. It's like zero respect in between and really like you're just learning out of a book and you're not learning out of like a person or out of like anything actually interesting you know yeah yeah no, i completely agree what do you what are your thoughts uh jasmine and mir on this topic like in comparison um, to yeah mir i can really relate to adam um i believe growing up in orville um and learning in our schools um teaches you to grow as a person rather than um to learn and become another person in the economy yeah Wow, that was a real deep remark right there, Mir. Uh, how about you? How about you, Jasmine? Um, I feel like, of course, there's the major things about like the way the schools are planned out and the curriculum and all. But in my opinion, it kind of comes down to relationships and just that everybody knows each other so much better. So there's kind of a mutual respect between everybody because to an extent you know it's not a stranger that you're talking to even if it's a teacher that you see every because we're small groups such small classes and um yeah there's like more i think it's just the relationship and the knowing of everybody that makes the big difference 
I agree. I agree. Just think about it. Like if you go to a high school, because like public high schools, for example, in the States go up to a couple of thousand, you know, and that's like pretty much a population of Oroville. If you talk about like the residents, you know, if you have a high school where there are 3000 or 2500 people, that's pretty much equivalent to the residents, uh, like residential population in Oroville. So to kind of put that into context, you know. Uh, you can even see it just in the bioregion, like around us, there are massive schools too. Exactly. Like, um, yeah, for sure. Like there's some colleges and even just high schools with 3,000 kids, like you were saying. And that's even worse, uh, like 80, 80 kids in one classroom with yeah. one teacher. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. My school were 45. Yeah. School no. School, you know what I mean? For sure. Like, honestly, like I was also very lucky when I went to Nelson Mandela. Um, I was a bit scared, to be honest. At that age, I was 17 when I left Oroville. I wasn't sure what type of education I was entering into. Um, shout out to Nelson Mandela School. It was like a museum or a sanctuary for Nelson Mandela. So it was a lot of Nelson Mandela posters and so much diversity. I met people from countries that I've never heard of. So I was like, oh, you're from that? Especially a lot of from like, let's say, African countries. And I was really glad because it was a very intimate environment too. In a classroom, we had up to maybe like 15 to 20. And for a public school system or an international school, that's very, very good. So I was like able to easily or seamlessly transition into uh, like a different schooling system, which I'm very grateful for. The next discussion, guys, I wanted to bring up was the level of youth engagement in the community. So we've already established that in Oracle, we have a lot of intimacy, right? A lot of intimacy. We, there's a lot of um, comfort with each other. So then a few weeks ago, again, when I was talking to Seth and Aisha, we also came to the same conclusion that we feel we regret that we didn't put enough initiative to like go engage with the community. So whether it be like going to a farm, like going to oral orchard and learning how to grow our vegetables, which I would argue is one of the most crucial skills in today's time, especially during COVID-19. You're like, wow, like you're so, we realize it's been like such a highlight and such a confrontation that we're so distant from nature, right? So we have like those kind of, we have that access, but I never made that, I never took that initiative. I never took the initiative to go learn at a very innovative uh, uh, unit in Oracle, like, let's say like Aquadine, or you know, there's also units that create their own solar panels. So um, we were like, why didn't we do that? As adults, we found ourselves like uh, filled with some regret. So I wanted to ask you, in this current generation of Oracle youth, has that changed a little bit? I mean, of course, this is a subjective evaluation, but I just wanted to know, like, um, at least speak for personally. So personally, do you guys find yourself with that kind of initiative? And if not, like, what do you think the reasons are? Mm, I think um, what, I, what I heard from you, for sure, there is a bit more of initiative inside, especially from my part. I like feel like I need to do something like give a give back. So Orwell's given so much to me. And also um, because I was in TLC that every year we would do like um, a service week. Is that the name right, Jazz? Yeah. So we would go to a unit and like um, a mm. week or a week and a half. And we would like help them out and learn and we would keep a diary of it. And then whatever, we would make um, uh, those weeks. And it was actually honestly really interesting. And as I grew uh, out of TLC and I went to, a few, uh, to law school, I didn't really have any interaction with the community so much. But every now and then a project came, like the Aura project that I worked in yeah. in October till December. Yeah. Then in March, I was part of a, a program called the Youth Pilot Program. That is oh. the transition be between like um, Orville kids doing their B form. So I was the, uh, me and my sister and a few other kids were like the first people, like it was a test run. Uh, then I'm also like, uh, slowly getting into the movement of tourism in Oroville. Um, and I'm doing like little projects here and there. And I think it's just generally it's fun. Like it, it takes a bit of energy, but it's quite rewarding and I feel like, uh, accomplished and yeah, yeah. giving back, I think is like, uh, would be my keyword. Like, yeah, I agree with you, Aiden. And personally, I think like you would do great in tourism. I can imagine you being a very fantastic tour guide, to be honest. But not tour guide in like such a like amusement park setting, but just oh, like yeah. really, really like getting into the nitty gritties of like community life and like you know sharing your experiences because that's so important, right? Because people come to Oracle with certain um, certain expectations. And I, I think it's really important for people who've grown up in the community to be like, oh, this is like my experience and I like, show people around with like some real like, humanity, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, how about you, Mir? What are your thoughts on this, just in terms of youth engagement in the community? Um, 
I, I live in Kailash, and after joining Kailash, I feel at least part of the youth community. I'm getting more integrated. I'm making more friends. I'm um, becoming more outspoken, more of an extrovert. Um, I also, in quarantine, was bored. And um, do you know Solitude Farm? Yes, yes, yes. I started um, volunteering there for about two months. Um, I love Krishna. I love his message. And um, then me and my friend, Kilan, another youth, a uh, senior of mine, um, started planting and making our own garden in Kailash. Whoa, that's... That's yeah. literally my dream right now. If I could do that in Munich, I don't have a garden. You guys, I legit live in like a concrete box. I mean, welcome to city life. Uh, but that's legit one of my dreams right now. And shout out to Krishna. Seriously, shout out to Krishna. I don't know him so well personally, but I've talked to a lot of Oravillians the past couple of months. And like Krishna is very well versed in the topic of permaculture. And since COVID-19 broke out, I think a lot of community members feel so much more invested in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. including the youth, evidently. So that's really nice to hear. Um, how about you, Jasmine? So, I mean, like Idan said, we did have quite a bit of exposure when we were in TLC because of the service weeks. And then we also had, uh, I think it was a year or a couple of terms where we had once or twice a week, we went to solitude and we had school the whole day in solitude. So we also got the exposure to permaculture and stuff. And I mean, I live in the green belt, so I'm in the forest all the time. <laughs> And my mom works in the forest full time. And when my dad lived with us, he worked in it quite a bit. And we also have a garden that we just restarted because the wild boars like ripped it apart. But, oh, no. um, and I'm not super involved in the forest or in the garden because just because of school and stuff. And I find it, I find it an interesting balance because I, I do have a similar opinion to Ivan that like Orville has given us so much and so many opportunities and stuff. And there is this feeling of like wanting to give back. But at the same time, I think that's also a personal thing because I really struggle with, like, guilt. But I feel like living in Orville as a youth, because it's a community of never-ending youth, and I feel like there's a lot of pressure towards the youth to be really um, helpful and to be really productive and to, like, have a drive and stuff. And so I find it sometimes a bit challenging um, growing up in Orville because People always say, like, take more initiative being a youth and stuff. And during, like, now actually during the lockdown and all, I feel like I have more time to, like, even explore ideas like that. But during school, I just, I can't even think about it. Like, I find it amazing how it then, like, gets around to doing those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I like the idea, but I haven't personally given back to the extent that I would like to. Yeah, thank you for your honesty. I really genuinely, that's really refreshing because people are like, I did this, I did that. Like, but did you really? So thank you for being very honest. And that actually was very well tied into my next question because I think personally also when I was growing up, there was like um, Jasmine mentioned, this overwhelming pressure, like very invisible yet very subtle, but very dominant in a way also um, of like, okay, you guys, you grew up here, you know what Oracle's about, you know all the communities, you know all these people, so what's, what's your take? Like, what can you do to give back, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think even to today, you know, I'm, I'm interacting with uh, many older members of, or of, um, like of the Oracle community, and they're like, oh, you know, why aren't they more like you than me? Why aren't they more like you? Like, and I'm like, I think there are a lot of people like me, so I just wanted to also ask Aiden and Mir, if you guys also feel that pressure from the, or like, you, let's say, like the rest of the community, especially the older generation, I call them the pioneering generation, the people who actually built the Matir Mandir, who really like started from scratch. I think they have this like, I mean, they even admit it. They're not even like, um, uh, they don't even hide their expectation. They're so vocal about it. They're like, oh, it's my hope to like give this like burning torch fire to down to the generation. So do you, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that, like Aiden um, and Mir? Well, for sure, one thing that I wanted to uh, say to the old to the point that we were talking about before that it's not like it's very self motivated to be involved in Orville. Like um, I know a lot of people that they don't have that they can't find that motivation and they just don't put in the energy. And I find it it's fine. It's their thing. Obviously, like I try and nudge my friends. I'm like, come on, help me out with this project. Like, let's do this. Let's do that. But um, I think it's a very personal thing. And to be honest, there are not so many people who are so involved with the community. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, the group that there is there, it's uh, quite small, I would say, of people, young people involved. And also uh, to the pioneers, like, um, sometimes there's a bit of like a crash because right now, Orville, we don't need so much anymore, like the physical development any anymore, like uh, building and planting trees, like that part is already really done. And yeah. sometimes I, I think it, it's hard for the pioneers to see that that's not what we need to focus on anymore. And we need to focus on like the society and the economy and like um, things that we can't really touch, right? And uh, we need to use our brain a bit more. Yeah. Um, no, and sometimes I... They, oh, sorry. It didn't kind of cut out, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, let's wait. He'll come back in due time. Um... Okay, well, while, while we wait for Aiden to reconnect, Mir, do you want to just describe, but also from your perspective, like what Aiden was saying, just like there is a, a portion of the youth community that don't have the motivation to give back. And also that like his comment personally, what he said about the pioneers, I think is very, very relevant. The fact that um, so much of the infrastructural elements are in place now, and now it's time to get into the more invisible aspects of a community including how we interact with each other and including also how we um, self-generate income. Okay, Aiden has left the chat, but <laughs> he shall, he shall, he shall return. So what are your thoughts on that, Mir? Um, I, I think uh, there, there's too many labels and obviously there, there'll always, always be um, age separ separations, but Okay. I believe there should be more interactive uh, activities. Like, for example, when I did a, a play, um, such as Sorcery at Sea or Miladacious, all different generations of Orville were working together to create this piece of art yeah. um, and give back to the community. Um, I don't see so much of that. And... Um, being a teenager, uh, a lot of us are confused and like Adam was saying, we don't have so much initiative and having the support of our elders can, we can create nice things together. Yeah, I agree guys. I guess like the question, the only remaining question I have on this topic is, how do you guys, how do you guys feel like um, Orville Youth can be more encouraged to partake? And of course, keeping in mind certain restrictions of like school, I mean, if you're in school, that does take a lot of your time, especially if you're taking it seriously. But do, are there, okay, if you're uh, in front of a camera right now and you're addressing the pioneering community or like the older members of the community, what would you say to them? Like really just from a, like a directly to be like, oh, this is what I wish you could do to make me feel like much, to spark my interest or uh, motivation. Um, I think like, honestly, it, it's a bit sad. Maybe it's a bit sad what I'm about to say, but uh, I think it's very nice. Like uh, many Orville youth struggle with like uh, having their own pocket money and stuff uh, yeah. since the maintenance is very low. And at least I know from my father's side that he really encourages youth people to come into the company and he helps them out with like um, a bit of money and for them to grow their skill like um, Rajiv Shankar. He's a photographer from Orville and for some time he was working with my dad and my dad was helping him out, like pay his stuff, you know, like he needs a camera. Where's he going to get the money for a good camera? You know, like yeah. he needs income. And I think that's a very encouraging thing. Um, it's obviously Orville's not about all about money, but for the youth, like we want um, to have that, like a bit of cash, yeah. you know, like to get a bike eventually to even if like save up and go for a trip and especially if your parents can't can't pay for you um yeah. that, that's a very that's a very nice thing you know i for would sure. say that that's something very very useful that the, that the pioneers could help out yeah you know? what about you um jasmine and amir what are your thoughts on just like how you, um the uh, other like older members of the community can incentivize the youth to like or make them feel more comfortable to partake in day-to-day uh, -day activities in Oracle? I feel like it has a lot to do with presumption. Just if there is no preconceived ideas that the youth of Oroville are either like them when they came or mm -hmm. that we are a specific type now, like I'm sure that they can see that when they came, there was such a diverse 
amount of uh, such a diverse group of people and now we're even more people so it's even more diverse so don't make presumptions uh, about our attitudes or things like that because I find it so demotivating when there's like blanket statements made about like the youth of Orville I'm sure they feel that way as well as the pioneers so I think it's like a two-way street just like presumptions of Aiden's sister Aloe she has her license and she was telling me the other day how she was driving the car and she has a license for driving a car and somebody was like oh so I see you're driving a car as though she doesn't have a license and it was just like, why are you making that presumption? <laughs> you probably don't. And she, like, you know, yeah. just a more, a more like, um, open-minded approach to everybody. Yeah. Okay, hear that, pioneers? No presumptions. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mir? What are your thoughts on this? Um, I, I think uh, the pioneers are somewhat defensive, um, and they yeah. kind of think of Orville as kind of their little baby that they have to take care of mm. and um, all these new youth uh, and sure there are some rowdies around um, that ruin our name but <laughs> um, yeah uh, <laughs> it's a tough topic it's, it's a tough, complex topic no, it's a complex topic here. I think yeah. coming to all, I mean, just, I think uh, one thing I'd like to speak on all our behalves, please correct me if you are not on the same page. I think personally, um, a lot of us, I mean, even Edith was born in Oroville. Jasmine, you were like, you were born in spirit in Oroville, let's say not maybe physically, but like, you were born in spirit there. And also Mir, you've been living there all your life. For me, I came back, I came a bit later. I came when I was, um, oh, Aiden has left again, but. So I came when I was like uh, seven and um, I realized as an adult now like engaging more with the Aura project that I also have to come to a decision, okay, I'm an adult now, um, do I, would I want to be a part of the Oracle community? Because it was never my choice and I don't see it in a self-victimizing victimizing way where I'm like, mom brought me here to a random jungle. I was like in a city filled with skyscrapers and then suddenly I'm in a jungle with like trees that look like Tarzan kids going on and just imagine like the culture shock that I went through as a kid. So my point is, I think um, also I really hope that the older members of the community give us that freedom and don't make all these presumptions and assumptions that we have to give back. Because keep in mind, they came at, as adults. They were at a stage in their life where they said, okay, uh, I've interacted in modern or urban part of the, uh, of the world and this is not for me. I want to um, tap into the vision or tap into the dream of Oracle. But for kids, we don't, it's equivalent to like, if I grew up in Amsterdam, I wouldn't expect Amsterdam residents to be like, yo, you guys have to get back to Amsterdam, right? Because of course we just, we, we were um, born there, we grew up there. So I think that's something that I would really like kind, this would be my address if I had, was like in a room full of older Oracleans. And I think they, they could empathize with that. The next topic I want to, you guys, explore is already what Eden uh, mentioned about just financial independence and also what it means to, like, do we, what financial independence for, means for Orville youth. So I feel like one of the main reasons that Orville youth feel certain pressure to go abroad and get, like, a certain qualification is to be at a later stage in life, be in a better position to, like, earn money, right? Because it is, like... I mean, Orville is not immune to the uh, rest of societal pressure in the world. Um, so I think a lot of kids are like, okay, I should go to college, I should get a degree, so that I have something to show for my merit or for my um, aptitude and skills. So then what I see often is, especially in the generation above me, they came back to Orville, they're doing great things, they've taken some very important roles, uh, whether it be in the working committee or in the FAMC, so they're doing a lot of things. But still, there is a group of them that have to go back to Europe or to the States to work on, like, on a seasonal level, like to go work at a Christmas market or to go work at like, these different musical festivals to earn money. So I'm, I'm really curious, like you guys are still young and I'm sure you're not worried too much about financial independence because you still are living with your parents or like, I mean, you're, you're living in Kailash, but still you feel like somewhat supported by your parents and whole thing. So do you have this worry that like, you are going to struggle to be financially independent when you live in Oroville? Um, I'm sorry for my bad connection. I connected to my data on my mobile. Okay. Uh, no worries. My Wi-Fi was being unstable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, about financial independence, um, I, I don't live with my parents neither. I'm a mutual roommate. Okay. <laughs> we live on the same floor in Canada. 
Um, so I was, I'm independent from my parents right now, independent. Um, my next step would be to be independent um, economically also. That's mm-hmm. something that I'm looking forward to. Um, I like, I work half time now. And as I said, I have my um, tourist guide uh, trips that I have a contract. So in that sense, I'm quite like, it's quite organized for me. And um, also I'm building up a skill that is uh, being a barista um, and it's coming along quite well. And that's something for sure that I want to explore out of Orville. I want to have like my few years of go out and explore the world. And I don't see that I will have a problem being um, financially independent from my parents. Yeah, um, because of my two my two strongholds that are being a barista and my tourist guide. Um, so yeah, for me that's that's not such a big um, like problem. It's more like how soon am I gonna get there? Okay, I'm really glad to hear that, Aiden. Um, what are you, what are what about you, Jasmine? What about you, Mir? For me, I've also started working since a year now. I teach swimming, and I've got a. Uh, a swimming teaching certificate for like the whole world so I could do that wherever I go which is great and I really enjoy it and it's something I love so um somehow I don't really I have not really ever had that uh fear or of like um or financial pressure just because somehow even though it is so challenging to live in Oroville off of the basic maintenance and without an external income, you're never gonna, over here, you're never really gonna be like life or death kind of situation where as in a city you would be. Yes, because yes. there is the solar kitchen, no matter how much we hate it. And <laughs> <laughs> there are all the basic needs like um, for you, which I think is somehow really comforting to know. And I think it's a great thing that that does exist already in, in Oracle. Um, so in that sense, I'm, I never have like a fear factor. But it's true that if you want anything above those basic um, things, it's really hard just on the maintenance. So I never expected to survive just off of that. So I kind of, in my head, had this picture of like the people that go out and then come back in, um, something like that more. Yeah. Um, how about you, how about you, Mir? Um, I'm quite the opposite. I find being part of Orville is very comforting knowing that we have such a tight knit community. And if I ever needed something, I know there would be not one, but a bunch of people that would be there to help me. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, I work at sushi now just to get, I work at Sakura sushi, a place in a unit in Orville. Um, just to make a little bit of money to eat out or whatever. Um, and I also believe that being in Orville, um, we're brought up to be more spiritual and part of nature, if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, a lot of youth haven't really had the, a broad experience, if you know what I mean. Um, the more materialistic, uh, want to travel, buy stuff, um, type of life, lifestyle. I think like from 20 to 25 after high school, uh, it gives us an opportunity to really appreciate Orville and come back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to add to your point, I think like it's a very reoccurring cycle that happens like in Orville. People like they, they'll finish their high school. They'll be like, okay, um, let me explore a bit. Either I go to university or... I learn a job or I do like an apprenticeship somewhere. Then like you do that for two or three years, then you get a job as that. And then you realize like, whoa, do I really want to be in the rat race? Do I really want to be living like this? Like, or some people might want to be doing it and that's totally fine. Like enjoy your life, you know, do what makes you happy. But in my opinion, like from living in Orville and being brought up with what Mir said, um, the spiritual and nature values, um, it's a very big, like, um, it's a very big magnetic pull to come back, I would say. Yeah, and I think many also, like, totally come back. Um, a link to, like, the previous question and with the pioneers and 
stuff. I think that's also a major point that somehow there's a sense of like betrayal when the youth always leave after high school. Mm. This thing of, oh, like they grew up here and now they're just ditching, they're just leaving. Yeah, that's what. But I think it's so important just because I think we are so much more um, useful to the community after we come back and after we've been exposed to the rest of the world because it's Mm. such a bubble. Yeah. And we shouldn't be thinking about like moving forward in the context always of Orville because we are so linked actually to the outside world and the bigger picture. So yeah, I think we need to keep in mind that that exposure is really necessary and gives us like some fundamental skills that can really enhance and help the community when we come back. Yeah. If we come back. Well, these are very all useful and very insightful um, things that you guys are saying. And also, I want to just comment on a couple of things. So first things first, what uh, Eden said about the rat race. So I've been living outside um, of Oracle for a long time now. So it's been almost eight, nine years. And um, especially engaging in this topic about how to restructure the economy, to be more caring, to be more inclusive, so that we don't have such huge income gaps within any society, not only for Oracle, but around the world. You have topics like universal basic income that is trying to be more human, take a more humanistic approach to like providing help to people for being human instead of being like, okay, you fill um, all these prerequisites. So now we'll give you help. It's so conditional, right? And that's not the way society should be structured. And getting to the topic of rat race, for me, engaging in this topic of economy, I honestly, like I get very emotional when I think that even in Germany, which arguably is one of the most wealthiest nations in Europe, and Europe is one of the wealthiest uh, continents in the world, so you can just put that into perspective. I, I, it, it breaks my heart when I see that there's so many people who just go to a job so that they earn an X amount of money that they can actually like just pay, and then they're like living pay to paycheck to paycheck. So there's not even any saving. They're just literally working to be able to feed themselves. And that for me is not any society that we should be living in. Especially like when, we're, when there's so much innovation, there's so much technology that could, so to speak, uh, help people to like explore more. If let's say at a point there's gonna be um, technology that takes care of all the mundane manual labor, right? And people can explore, be much more creative. I think that's how we should be moving towards in society. And I think it ties back to what Aiden was saying that like when you live abroad for a long time and you see so many people in these so-called trap rat races, like work, 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 like earn money. And then it's like a consumerist culture. So you feel like you have to spend more and buy more too. So it's like you always end up in zero yeah. and then you're like, okay, let's work more. And then it's like, what are we, what is the aim of this? Like when does this like rat race end, right? So I completely agree with you. And it's really like, it's um, really, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy to hear such insights being shared by younger people because this is honestly something I came to realize much later in my life, like recently, you know? Aura, the value we create together. together.